live from London, it's Cowboys. It's Friday night, we just got paid. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a packet of cigarettes. It's dark, and I can promise you we're wearing sunglasses. Now, I hope you're ready for an hour roundabout of good, clean fun, frolics, and all round family entertainment where I only say the word bollocks once or twice. Then you're mm-hmm. in the right place. This is the award winning radio show with no pictures, but sounds, and it focuses on everything motor related from supercars to your everyday banger that gets you to and from that job that you despise with a passion, a job you hate so much that one day you're going to take a weapon and go from cubicle to cubicle executing fellow members of staff. (laughs) I'm only joking, of course. We all love working for the man, but I digress. (laughs) Yes, if you like cars and stuff and blokes chatting about tyre pressure, you're in the right place. This week, we got our usual uh, correspondents in our bulging and throbbing... (laughs) Mail bag. We've got me moaning about speed limits, and I am going to moan about speed limits. And we've got our finger. Oh, here you go. Mother, mother, mother. On the, on the pulse of current affairs in the news. Come here, and there's more. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to be tackling. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, we're going to be tackling an emerging classic in our classic car section. Uh, this week, we're returning to Germany, but it's not. Uh, but it's the DDR, not the GDR. Uh, we're going off to west, the western side of the border of Stuttgart, to be precise. Ooh, okay. uh, and we find a Porsche that you can uh, consider to be, well, it is considered to be the poor man's 911. Okay. Uh, and yes, it ain't the Boxster. Uh, so once again, we say guten tag to the classic from the fatherland. Shh, don't mention it all. And yes, we're going to have a moment about speed limits, as, as Rich said in a moment. Uh, I'm Simon Sudron. And... Come and play. Everything's a okay. Friendly neighbours there. That's where we'll meet. Can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? Thank, thank you, you, Big. Thing. Thank you, Big Bird. <laughs> I'm Richard Green, and Mr. Brown goes off to town on the 821. But he comes home each evening, and he's ready with his gun. So, who do you think you're kidding, Mr. Hitler? If you think old England's done. I love cultural references from about fifty years ago. I think yeah. it was it was it was Bud. Was it it was Flanagan and Alan? I think it was uh, Flanagan that actually sang that in Dad's Army. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fla- from oh, Flanagan okay. and Alan, who had the who were the part of the crazy gang. This is lovely for our listeners. Going, what are you talking about? TV show back in the nineteen seventies called Dad's <laughs> Army. Very very popular. So popular now, the BBC is still showing it prime time. They um, are. On, a, on a Saturday night, I think on uh, BBC Two. Um, massively, massively huge, huge, uh, significant show about um, uh, retirees and very young people and, dis- and sort of people that are not able to fight in World War Two. They're a part of this thing called the Home Guard. Well, mm. the guy that sang the song was it was it was I think it was Bud Flanagan and Alan Bud Allen, the guy that sang the song, and he was originally a, a, a music hall star from the 1930s and then a movie star in the 1940s and sort of associated very much uh, with World War II. There you go. You learn something new every day. Anyway, should we tell everybody what they're listening to? Uh, yes, it this is, of course. The one the only. is Carboys. Carboys. Now, I've been fighting fit this week. I've been a lot better than I was last week. Uh, yes, you were ill last week. I was ill last week. Uh, I blame the children. I've been getting annoyed. I've been having a think. I've been getting annoyed with speed limits. Mm. What is the deal with the new 20 mile an hour speed limit being introduced into London? No one, no one wants it. I don't believe it's going to make the roads safer. I think it's going to in- certainly increase pollution locally, especially as we've all been encouraged in the UK to buy diesels for the last 10 years. <laughs> I've just introduced it into my borough, and I can tell you now, people are pissed off. I don't think it'll stop the idiot who drives 50 through a 30 mile an hour zone. But now that zone is 20 from 30. That's what we've lost 10 miles an hour. If you're unfamiliar with London, where we both live, let me tell you, the driving is done around six miles an hour in rush hour. (laughs) So the need for 20 miles an hour, especially this far out in the city centre, you're a little closer. I'm in zone six. You're in zone four? I'm zone four, yes. Uh, Even in the, so the need for this, this far out, 
pretty much uh, unrequited. Even in the centre of the city, you're forced to do low speeds most of the time because there's huge amounts of traffic. You, you can only really get at, uh, above 20 miles an hour at night mm. where there is no one around. Now, and if you're worried about pedestrian deaths, here's, a big, uh, here's an idea. They use it in America. It's called a jaywalking law because mm. people in the UK walk in front of my car all the time and expect me to stop, which I do because I don't really want to hit anybody. But they step off the curb, straight into the path, so maybe pedestrians should be responsible for their own safety when they're on the road and not walk in front of cars and expect me to look after them because I'm, I'm already looking after me and I'm looking after my children in the car and I'm looking after cyclists. Uh, with all this being said, I am a cyclist. I am a car driver. I'm occasionally a bus driver. I'm occasionally a van driver and I'm <laughs> a runner. So I do almost all forms of transport. Uh, oh, yes. I ride horses occasionally as well. And I have ridden a camel and I've ridden an elephant. <laughs> Not, I don't regularly do that in London, suffice it to say. True. It's the ones that have the push chairs. That's the ones that you've got to worry about because they push the push chair out first when Many the years, traffic's going. I think, yes. It's, aren't the, the children usually called Tyson or uh, Summer? <laughs> And the well, mother's... named after a drink like Lambrini. Lambrini, something. shut up! Shut up! I'm on the phone to your dad. Shut uh, and I. <laughs> I, I saw a woman, well, I would say a woman, I'm saying a teenage girl when I lived in South East London, push, uh, pushing a push chair in front of her on Honor Oak Station and sort of catching it. So she'd push it and then walk a yeah. bit, and then push it and walk a bit on quite a major station going into the centre of London. <laughs> And I was just looking at it again. Obviously, the child inside, and there was if not there wasn't any. If there's was nothing, there's no baby inside. I think oh, who cares? Yeah, she was just pushing it, and who? Oh well, you know who gives a toss? It's only, it's only a child. <laughs> I'll be banging out another ten of these in various shades mm. for the next uh, twenty odd years. Um, but yeah, at the twenty mile an hour speed limit, we're waiting now for the stickers to be peeled off. And pretty much, <laughs> apart from me, because obviously I completely obey the law. Um, we pretty much can't wait for everybody in the borough to completely ignore them. We had a vote on it. There was a public referendum and you had mm. 60% people saying we don't actually want this. But they did it anyway. They just did it anyway because, yeah, you know, it's uh, in no way do we live in a, in a totalitarian um, dictatorship um, run by uh, an illiberal elite. We don't, Simon. That's a, that's a, that's a complete lie. There um, you go. Democracy yeah. doesn't work. No, I think I think, <laughs> I think if... I do. Th I do think if if um, uh, the author of 1984, whose name escapes me, um, oh, Clark, uh, George Orwell, George Orwell was still around, he would be quite shocked in how yes. in where, the way we have speed cameras, we are police, and we have uh, a CCTV, and we are constantly policed in this country. He would be very. Sh I think he's shocked at what he thought was a dystopian future of his within his imagination actually came true. Mm. Well, that was the talk of all the facial recognition cameras and all that. But anyway, we digress. We might carry this on later on. <laughs> Should we do some car news now? Should we Shall go we? Back to what we did? What uh, we yeah, what well, 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 we're employed to do. Yes, I'm, I'm just queuing it up. Cue so. the music as we go. News. <laughs> and of course, this week in shite car news, um, <laughs> we've, we've got uh, Dacia or Dacia. I, the adverts say Dacia, I say Dacia. It's like IKEA, IKEA. Uh, hang on, the, the advert. The adverts say Dacia. 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 Somebody from Yorkshire, which yes. means you can bloody well trust him. Come and get <laughs> the new Dacia. Yes. Like cars used to be back in the nineteen eighties. You get a free I... park a pen with every Dacia that you buy. <laughs> you can't buy a cheaper car than this because it's made of bollocks. I digress. Please continue. Thank you, Parky. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, Dacia or Dacia has raised the pricing of its Duster SUV uh, following the addition of a new entry level petrol engine. Now, you usually get excited about things like this, but the new engine is available on the Duster, equipped with uh, access, essential and comfort trim. I like the word comfort trim. Uh, with prices ranging from 10995 to 13995 This marks a £1,000 increase over the Duster's previous 9995 entry price. So, 
fair bit of uh, money added onto mm, that. What you get? It, well, you get a turbocharged three-cylinder TCE 100 unit, which replaces the 1.6 SCE. They're, they're old, just Renault engines. Uh, <laughs> 115 bhp engine uh, with less power, with only 99 bhp. But it says it <laughs> okay. improves emissions. Of Who cares? It can improve emissions because it's, it's a less smaller power. engine. <laughs> exactly. Did um, they find these old Renault engines in that landfill we were talking about last week, where the French <laughs> buried the cars? Yeah, probably. Okay. That's where it's from. All right. Uh, CO2 emission output is down 18%. That's good percentage-wise. Uh, at 126 grams per kilometre, and fuel efficiency has improved from 40.9 MP, mpg uh, 40 to 43.9. Love numbers here. Uh, 40.9 to 43.5 mpg to 48.7. Four to forty nine point five so, MG. So so forty to forty three, but it's slower. Yes, mm. uh, so much slower that the acceleration and top speed are slightly reduced. Uh, though the TCE is capable of naught to sixty eventually in uh, twelve point four seconds, and it has a top speed of one hundred and four miles an hour. I can reach that walking in London. Uh, mm. The the Dacia was sold uh, has sold nearly ten thousand dusters. Uh, so far this year, that's an 89% increase compared to the same period in 2018. Uh, even with the newly increased prices, the Duster remains the UK's cheapest mainstream SUV. Um, with I've seen one of these the other day, MG's rival uh, ZS available for £12,495. This was really odd. I saw this red vehicle with um, white stripes down the side, and on yeah. the stripes it said MG, and I went, It's a new MG. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, yeah, they've been around for a while. I remember seeing them up at, uh, they had a showroom, I think they might still have it, up at um, Marble Arch, not Marble yeah. Arch, um, uh, Piccadilly Circus off Green Park. Next door to the Richard Green Art Gallery. It's where my I like to uh, <laughs> exhibit all my <laughs> fine works of art. The Richard Green Art Gallery, I encourage you to go there. Be, being a lover of um, Monet, Manet, uh, uh, Modernism, postmodernism, Banksy, Banksy, <laughs> uh, ducks flying up a wall, the Green Lady, the Crying Boy, all the classics. <laughs> I like to have an art gallery. Now, I thought that was the weirdest location for basically a cheap motoring brand because it's not MG. No. People, people, it's not MG. MG of Abingdon has gone. The 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 work they, it was sold to Rover. It became Austin Rover. For God's sake, the MG Metro. It hasn't been MG since about 1983. So MG <laughs> is long gone. This is yes. the flying wing wang company of of <laughs> Shenzhen or Shanghai, isn't it? Yes. Basically, you've probably got some old crappy 1980s Lancia. Not Lancia. What am I thinking? Mitsubishi Lancer engine in it, mm. something like that. It's 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 old technology with a new shiny coat on it, and I and it's the same with the Duster. The yeah. Duster's old technology. Now, I I think people buying the Duster are old folk who yes. don't care about this. Is if you remember back in the nineteen nineties, the old folk bought Malaysian cars. They bought Proton. Pro Proton. Proton uh, Saga, the, I mean, the, the name, the Proton Saga. I mean, hello, is it sponsored by the company Saga? <laughs> Saga Holidays, what would you drive? I drive a Proton Saga. And, of course, back in the 1990s, the people retiring then had all fought in Malaya in the 1950s. So, <laughs> so they love the idea of a car that takes them back to their bloody youth when they were shooting <laughs> communist terrorists in the, in the Malay archipelago. Um, it was, but basically, that car was a 1980s uh, Mitsubishi Lancer. Yes. The, yes. So, so the Dusters are 19 noughties, stroke 1990s. 1990, uh, based on a Clio? Clio. Are you getting very upset at the fact that Duster in the UK uses the. Th um, Another one bites the dust. Yes, by, by Queen. Because I know you're a big fan of Queen. I am, but no, it's good. It's, it's if they get paid. Yeah, some people listen to Queen. If if the next tour is completely sponsored by Dacia or Dacia, you probably will get quite upset. Well, you never know. Brian May and Roger Taylor are in their seventies now, so they're in prime target for uh, 
who would drive That's a, right, a who were driving a, 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 a duster. <laughs> now, people are buying the duster. Let's, in the UK, they're buying the dusters. They're old people. They're going to own it for three years. They don't care about the depreciation because they're not going to have to get it MOT. They're pretty yeah. much guaranteed with a new car. It's going to work for three years. Then they're going to get rid of it, and then they're going to take a hit, and they're going to buy another duster. Mm. So I think there's going to be a schlock of dusters on the second-hand market. Because if, if, it sounds like you know 10,000 is a lot. I wouldn't buy one because I hear secondhand, they are full of rust. Like I wouldn't <laughs> buy a secondhand Peugeot, a secondhand Renault. I wouldn't buy a secondhand Citroën. Yes. Yeah, so I wouldn't buy a second-hand French car. So where these are going to go, I don't know. Mm, the landfill, I think. The landfill. They, they, they'll go in that, that landfill. That well, anyway, oh, great. So they've made a, made a worse car. Okay, uh, from the ridiculous to the sublime, from Burger King to Michelin Three Star, from Aldi to Marks and Spencers, from eating poo out of a gutter to consuming beluga caviar from a silver platter. Mm. Aston Martin... Yes. has launched a new service to help owners create their ideal storage facility. Automotive galleries under the Q branch of Aston. Strange. I see what they've done there. Q. Yeah. Q. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will assist owners in designing bespoke garages or display units to house their Aston Martins. The new subprime division will also design and build entire homes in partnership with high-profile architectural firms where in the client's car collection acts as an integral design feature. Architects are assigned to individual projects based on their awareness of the local area and the needs of people with far too much money. I had a mate of mine. His dad was a uh, quantity surveyor. Mm. His garage was bigger than his house. His dad had a Rolls-Royce Corniche. Mm. He had, now let me get it right, DB... DB4, the James, but he had a DB4. Yeah. His Bond one. He had another, I think he had a Shad, and and they treated his mum, like this is really weird, to a, an MG Maestro. <laughs> <laughs> it went a bit like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, oh, M- no. An Austin Rover MG, that's what you get. I think it was an auto as well. Um, <laughs> But they get this. He's, so his dad's loaded. He's got all these cars. Beautiful, yeah. huge, bespoke garage. The house next door, he had to share a bedroom with his brother. <laughs> Whereas my dad drove a Sierra, and I got my own bedroom. So I used to think, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm doing quite well here. That's so, so Him and his brother, like, not as little kids, his brother went to university, and they still had the bunk beds. <laughs> when, why didn't you, Dad, while he was getting that huge garage built beautiful huge brick garage sort of put an extension on the back of the house so you could have your own room i don't i don't get that i don't get so what norman foster turns up with a bunch of people and they yes. redi- re- they design your uh, garage for you yes so you just can park your aston martin you say so you can park your aston martin i'm assuming a polished concrete floor or one of those white floors chris evans has got something like this for his vast collection of ferraris mm. um, yeah that is true which, which i think are about the same number as the listeners to his radio show. Um, <laughs> anyway. Anyway, moving on. Moving Sorry, on. Chris, if you're listening. Yes, um, I know he listens all the time. Yeah, um, honesty hurts. Let's do, let's do some electric car news because okay. this show, we love electric car news. Uh, the, there are now more EVs, electric vehicles, uh, the electric vehicle charging stations in the UK than conventional fuel stations, uh, according to data published by uh, Nissan. <laughs> really? Apparently. Uh, the Japanese car maker has revealed that as of August, which we're in now, uh, there are 9,199 EV charging stations across the country compared to 8,396 petrol stations. The UK's first petrol station was opened exactly 100 years ago in Aldermanston in Berkshire. The mm. first, uh, the number of fuel stations peaked at 37,539 in 1970, um, but has been in steady decline since, with more than 3,000 sites closing between 2000 and 2005. EV charging stations, by contrast, are increasing in number rapidly. There were 913 in 2012, but 6,699 by 2018, so last year, uh, and more than 2,000 has been installed so far this year. The current figure of 9,199 includes more than 1,600 rapid charging points. So 
we think mm, they're, they're putting the infrastructure in very, very slowly. But the British government recently pledged two and a half million pounds to provide more charging facilities in residential areas um, as part of its plan to bring the country's CO2 emissions down to almost zero by 2050. So I don't know. Do you have any charging stations around near where now, you live? Now, we've got to qu- quantify what we're talking about here, because this is a little bit of smoke and mirrors. OK, now, I think petrol station. Should A, be a purveyor of fine petrol, diesel, in the good old days, two stroke, um, <laughs> two star, two star, I should say, two star, yes. four star. So basically, petrol, diesel, super unleaded. I should be able to buy a pasty, uh, possibly a coffee. Uh, should a little, little mini market in there. Um, Some sweets for the journey. Sweets. Oh, sweets for the journey, you know. Uh, and and the, you know, the old days, top shelf porn, had some uh, newspapers. Barbecue coal. Christ, it's the mother's birthday. Better get some flowers. Yes. Um, all of that. Right. What we're talking about here with the charging station is literally an electric point. Now, I, I parked up today to go and get a haircut, to go and take the kid to kids uh, to go to Starbucks. Why does that? The kids were with me, basically. This is oh. what I was doing. I need to get a haircut. I need to get some coffee. We're doing this, Same. kids. And um, where I parked were four charging stations. Right. So is each one of those a charging station in the car park? So the car park we parked was one, two, three, four, four electric cars. Mm. It's Teddington. It's full of liberal media types. Um, yeah. Yeah, they've all got electric cars. I'm saving the planet. No, you're not really. But anyway, um, that's what. So each one of those is, is a charging station. Then I get, then I believe it. Because there are a lot around. I don't think they're free. I think you have to, do you have to put your credit card in and pay for your car to be topped up? I guess I think you do, but it's like where. But that's not a pe- that's not a petrol station. No. That is a that's a charge point. Point. We're not talking about. And you go down to the waitress around the corner from me. It's got a charge point for electric cars. I sometimes mm. park in there because I don't give a toss. Um, there's there's charging points all over. That's not the same thing as a petrol station. So so the loss of petrol stations in the UK I think is <laughs> is insane. I I for, when I moved back here from Asia in 2008 I couldn't find anywhere to ch- to to get petrol one night. I'm driving around southwest London going, "Oh that's closed. Uh, uh that's closed. Uh, uh that's closed." Uh and I was like, "Where?" And I'm sort of running out of petrol. Finally found somewhere that's open 24 hours. But half the garret there, there was one two in my mind three petrol stations in my local area that have gone since 2004. But is it not one of two things? One, cars are getting more fuel efficient, so do they need to stop for petrol as often? Number yes. one. Yes. And number two, uh, near where, where I work in Wandsworth, they've actually got charging points on street lights. Oh, okay. So you've got a street lamp. Uh, so is that in... cha- so? Is that what we're talking about? Is that? A... I don't know. Yeah, that's it's probably really... a, that's another charging point. I think I think you're right. I think the supermarkets killed the petrol station. Certainly where we live in London, yes. land is more valuable. There's no money in petrol. Your margins are really slim. Mm. People have got bigger capacity engines. I mean, my car will do 450 miles between, and it's it's petrol. It's a big engine between yeah. between fill ups. So, do you really need as many petrol stations? Probably not. Better to build a block of flats, make more money out of that, or or, or a shopping complex or something like that. Um, but I don't think you can equate a charging point is what we're talking about. Mm. I think that's a bit of a misnomer. Right. Finally, uh, in news, in Donald Trump and hip hop megastar car news, <laughs> Rolls Royce has unveiled a limited edition Ghost Zenith Collector's Edition, which will offer the highest level of bespoke features on the car to date. The Zenith will be limited to just 50 examples. I better put my name down now. And the British car firm <laughs> says it offers more bespoke options than any model apart from the 2016 limited run Phantom Zenith, uh, which was it's like the Star Wars thing, the Phantom <laughs> Zenith. The special edition is intended as the ultimate version of the current Ghost before the new models arrive next year. Ghost Zenith features a number of designs inspired by the 2009 concept that previewed the Ghost. So they've gone back to the drawing board. They've yeah. got a, the a concept car and they've nicked a couple of things off there. It includes an ingot in the interior made from the original concept car Spirit of Ecstasy. All right. Mm, okay. No, 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 not like a George uh, a Victoria Cross, really, is mm. it? made from the cannons that they captured <laughs> during the siege of St. Sebastopol mm. as the, whatever they were, charge, the charge of the light brigade <laughs> on a road, 
<laughs> on into battle. Um, mm. It's not exactly the same as that. Um, a section of artwork is also showing the technical detail <laughs> that has been engraved into the centre console. Oh, okay, so, gosh. so far, I don't care about either of those things. The Spirit of Ecstasy and the Clock of the Ghost Zenith are both engraved with its name. Great, okay. There are illuminated door pockets, uh, perforated leather to emit light into the cabin, yay. Uh, while the contrasting leather seats feature embroidery inspired by the seat details in the 1907 Silver Ghost. Right. So your your name is uh, Drake. Uh, you're a, a massive hip hop star. <laughs> I don't think Drake. Did you know? So he's got the honeys in the back. They're all there. They've got the uh, what's the champagne that they drink? I never drink it. They've got the cristal. He's mm. smoking his Cubans. Uh, they're in the back of the car, and then halfway through, uh, he's definitely scored with these two hot women in the back. He says, so, now you may know that the uh, embroidery feature in the car is inspired by the seats in the original 1907 Silver Ghost. As we're Hang on, they that, leave. Their response is in the back. <laughs> oh, sorry, what? What? Why did you say, Drake? <laughs> it's all very nice, but what else do you get with it? You get the mm. same engine, 6.6 litre V12, twin turbo, and the price, well, no current announcement yet, but it's going to be substantially higher and the 200,000 for the current base model ghost. Ah, oh, dear. Dear, 50 oh dear, pe- dear. Only 50 people in the world. If, if, you're, if you're Donald Trump, the only people that are going to buy this are Nouveau Riche. They're mm. the Philip Greens, they're the Donald Trumps, then the hip-hop stars. And if it was me, I'd just buy a ghost and work out what the difference is between this and the Zenith, and I'd get the car <laughs> customized like they do in the States. Mm. What do you want? Bigger wheels, better stereo, screw the leather that they've got. Lights. Um, lights um, would be good. Underneath, under, yeah, better underneath lights. Not, what are they talking about? An interior ingot? Who gives a... I want my <laughs> face on the dash. <laughs> yes, everywhere. I want door handles to be, to, be, to, to be taken off and be modelled on a, a, a full-size copy of my phallus in gold. <laughs> That's the person that's going to buy this car, and that's the level of detail. The wood on the back, I want that replaced with genuine teak from Jimi <laughs> Hendrix's last guitar he ever played. <laughs> um, uh, interesting fact. Anyone interested? Uh, so the original people's Rolls-Royce. So I think Rolls-Royce is always considered a working man's car, because if you made it in the UK, yeah. you didn't buy a Bentley, you're no, going to you show off. If yeah. you started off sweeping the factory floor, ended up owning the factory in the 1960s, you know, I've made it good. You know, I'm from, you know, I'm a, I'm a working class lad and I'm, I'm now on the bloody company. Mm. You're going to buy the first car was the Shadow. Now it was yeah. a, oh, Shadow, yes. The original Shadow. If you had the cash in 1967, it was the price of a terraced house in London. Oh, okay. So, but in 2019, what terraced house can you buy for two hundred thousand pounds? No, you don't think oh. you could. No, you're looking. At, you're looking at a little bit more than that. So it's yeah. very strange that the relationship between the cost of cars and the cost of housing in the UK has, has sort of flipped. Right, mm, that's the end broken. of the news. All broken. Uh, we're going to go into the classic car of the week. Uh, this week, we thought we'd take a look at the poor man's Porsche. And before you say, "What a nineteen nineties Boxster," no. <laughs> Two decades before that, I'm going to take you to a time when only the mega rich could afford the Porsche. Yes, I'm talking about a car that came to epitomise the 1980s, a car that was driven by stockbrokers and hairdressers alike, not the Ford car. (laughs) Or or the Master MX-5 Miata. A car that started life as an Audi van. Of course, it's the Porsche 924. Introduced in 1976, the Porsche 924 was originally conceived as a Volkswagen sports car to replace the unpopular 914, which did look like an MG, (laughs) and only was ever only going to wear the VW badge. The Wolfsburg company commissioned Porsche to design and engineer the car, but when Volkswagen decided to drop the idea, Porsche bought the rights and introduced the 924 as their own car. It used an Audi engine, literally from the back from a van, with a poor cylinder head. The drive, though, was rear mounted through the transaxle, providing a near perfect 50 50 weight distribution. I think it was 53 to 47. 
Build quality was the usual superb Porsche standards, and the 94 was an instant sales success, tripling the company's factory output and allowing it to move into the 911, um, uh, allowing the 911 to be moved up market. Hmm. Fans decided the 924's lack of outright pace. With that in mind, Porsche did what it does best, developed a turbocharged version, finally allowing the 924 to exploit its balanced suspension setup. It, uh, it had a 45 bhp power boost that raised its top uh, speed by 20 miles an hour, five-speed gearbox, uprated suspension, the 924 turbo, very well received. Over a five-year period, they sold 12,000. In 1981, taking inspiration from a prototype, for the forthcoming 944, the Porsche built the 924 Carrera GT, wide-bodied turbo-based car built for homologation purposes. Its engine output was boosted by 40 brake horsepower, thanks to an intercooler and internal modifications. Performance was old-school vivid with lots of lag, turbo lag, and plenty of top-end power. The GT sold only red, silver, or black. And just 75 of those were sold right-hand drive in the UK. In 1985, they built the best version, which was the 924S with a 2.5-litre engine overhead cam. Power raised up to 160 bhp. 1988 model year was the same as the Le Mans edition. Black or white was offered with lower suspension. Now, the great thing about the 924 and most Porsches is they're galvanised which means they're not prone to rust. The downside is that these things were affordable, and I mean very affordable. A friend of mine's mum had one of these uh, mm. with only four-speed. I do remember wow. that. Um, and lots of people drove them far too hard. Uh, my mate was also a, a fan of these. I think he had about yeah. three in a row. So they were cheap. There was a lot of them made. You could Pick up a late model 924S with around 100,000 on the clock, about three grand. This will have mm. problems. This will have rust issues. Yeah. But if you spend up to eight, you can get an absolute minter with super low mileage and a good owner history. Best bet is go to the uh, owner's club. Have a look. Go to the wherever you are in the world. Have a look at the owner's club website. They're not the fastest cars in the world, but they've got great character. Practical four seats in them. Two tiny bucket seats at the back. Yes. They make a great classic daily driver. So, yeah, that is good. And that is on mine. And say, so, yeah, it's 924. I do like the 924 with the little pop up headlights as well. They're mm. really good. That was they it, were yes. Quirky. Yes. And sometimes it, it looked a little bit like it had a stroke because only one of them <laughs> popped up. I think they were, they were pneumatic. I think you had the same issue with the Lotus, the original Lotus. Alain. Um, which is a beautiful looking car. They are great looking cars. My mate had three in a row, only got rid of them when he had kids. He was like, right, oh, this is just not practical. But, and I was also, how old is that? Well, it's 1986. I was like, but there's no, or 1985, there's no rust on it. No, no, it's galvanized. Wow. Um, you, it, it, it's getting harder to own them because parts are becoming more scarce. Yeah. But uh, he loved them and they are, I've been in the car with them. They're great little cars, great cars to drive, rear wheel drive, sports car. And there's a, still a cachet about having a, a Porsche badge. And I think I'd, I'd be happier sat in there than sitting in a Boxster. Oh yeah, absolutely. With the huge rear window on the back as well. Yes. I like that really curved window on the back. You could get a lot of stuff. Although, when I was, as I, as I mentioned, my, my friend's mum had one when we were little kids in yeah. the 80s. And I do remember taking the Mick because it only had four speed. My dad's uh, Sierra. <laughs> like, he was wow. like, yeah, it's a Porsche. I was like, still got four gears. Don't care. I assume that's come from the van engine that used to have. It, they just put the two things together and just thought, well, four speed will do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it. So, mm. yes, 924. If you fancy a classic car, go out and get one. Um, I'm going to do... We did a Lost Highway speech uh, last week, and I, I enthused about my favourite road. You did? Which uh, is, I think, Highway 4 in the Malaysian island of Langkawi, which goes at the side of Gunung Ragung, I think it's called, which is uh, Ragung, which is a volcano on the island, which is very, very good. Uh, we've had lots of uh, people uh, emailing in. Uh, I'll do the, 
Yes, I'll, shall I do the first one and you do the second one? How about that? I've yeah, got, yeah, there you can go. Do it. yeah. Dave from Queensland. Best road is the coastal highway, mate. From Cairns to Port Douglas, Highway 44, the main road out of Cairns itself, heading along the east coast of Queensland. So it's a beautiful road, amazing at night. You can see across the Pacific towards the Great Barrier Reef, and it's known as uh, Captain Cook Highway. Now, I read this. I've done yeah. this road. I've been on this road, and he's right. When I went on it, we went on it at night and they were doing burn back on the hills. They were burning the brush back. Yes. But the yeah. whole of the hill was on fire. And we've got this. Um, then there's the road and then just this amazing view out, out across the Pacific. I was like, this is so cool. Wow. That is um, cool. And there's a great loop you can do from the 44, Highway 44. You can head inland because it stops. The Captain Court Highway literally stops there. And you have to properly go off road go, going uh, north. Um, you head the 44 back inland, then get on the 81 east. And you go to the 52 and it brings you back into Cairns. The reason we did this is you go from sort of Pacific Coast Highway mm. through to what looks like desert with giant uh, termite mounds through <laughs> to ca cattle country. Yeah, it's all flat. Then you get what looks like the English countryside, the Lake District, watching <laughs> ducks and rolling <laughs> Then you get back into jungle and then you end up on this really weird switchback, which goes through this forest, which is primeval. How and many miles see, is that? that it's only, a, no, it's only about 60 miles. Oh. It's the, and you can do it in a day. It's the coolest, it's the coolest drive in Australia. It's brilliant. I mean, somebody, yeah, well, yeah, I haven't been up the Daintree, mate. And then you go across to Northern Territories. This is before you get to the Daintree. If you've got a day, in Queensland, if you're in Cairns or Port Douglas, do this route. It's brilliant. And you can see, you, you see a waterfall, you see ancient forests, you see the desert, you see English countryside, you see Aussie cattle country. Got everything, it, hasn't it? It has totally. It was the cool. It's like, okay, we don't need to go do anything. I'm, yeah, let's go to the pub. And then I, I did it on my honeymoon. So <laughs> when he was talking about this, I was like, hang on, I know this highway. Fantastic. Uh, however, France mm -hmm. are in the French Alps disagrees. He <laughs> says, no, 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 the best, the best highway <laughs> in the, in his, in her, sorry, uh, in her opinion, uh -huh. is uh, the route Napoleon, which right. starts in Grenoble and finishes in Grasse. I think that's right, Grasse. Yes. yes. Uh, the 200 mile route replicates uh, uh, that taken by Napoleon in 1815 and is marked by a series of French Imperial Eagle statues. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, it takes in some of the most stunning mountain sceneries in Europe, and the road itself is so particular, so spectacular, it uh, regularly features as one of the top ten drives in the world. As a result, it can get busy, and in the summer, especially with bikers, uh, all going on that route. If you're allowed, if you're uh, if you allow around eight hours to complete it, you'll have plenty of time to enjoy the scenery and have a leisurely lunch. So, Francois. Uh, disagrees and says no, 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 no. Oh. Route to Napoleon. Yeah, about eight bottles of wine, French lunch, wouldn't it, and a baguette, and some onion. Yes, <laughs> joined by the police force. <laughs> joined by the police force, all smoking gulwars, <laughs> and get it back into the ha car half cut. <laughs> that yes. seems to be the way you drive in France. <clears throat> I'm not drunk. No. I'm not limits, but now, and of course, France is the country where you have to drive with with two. breathalysers. No, with two breathalysers, not just one oh. breathalyser. If you get caught, wrong. it's just brilliant. <laughs> I, asked, I said, so why do you have to have two breathalysers in case you use one? <laughs> then you have another breathalyzer. <laughs> okay, but then don't I have to travel with an At infinite least. number, yes. an infinite number to the pie of uh, car breathalyzers? In fact, I have to have four trailers because you might use one and then I might use another one. <laughs> I might use one. On the way to the bar, no, I'm not pissed. And I might use the other one. Oh, I'm definitely pissed now. And they only last, those the little breathalysers only last, the cheap charcoal ones, they only last uh, a year or so. Oh. But, you know, I think, I know people have had them in the car for like 10 years. As long as the <laughs> police go, oh, they are there. It is fine. So, You're not fine. drunk. As long as, as long as you haven't, the French, I think the French rule is, as long as you haven't drained all the optics uh, that are positioned <laughs> on, on your windscreen, uh, then you're fine to drive. <laughs> I think it's Gerard Depardieu has has lost his Legion d'honneur because he has been done <laughs> so many times. Yes, that sounds right. right. Yeah. <laughs>
I don't care. No. Okay. Uh, and finally, Tony in London emailed in, and he says, no, best road in, Lo- in the world is the A1 out of London because it's the best way to get out of this stinking mess that is the capital. <laughs> but he says, make sure, oh, yes, make sure you drive at 20 miles uh, an hour or below because it is 1887 and I have a bloke with a red flag running in front of the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear a1 actually no some parts of the a1 not too bad but i wouldn't wouldn't say it is the best road <laughs> it's not fantastic it's i did i did it the other day going up north from i was going from chelmsford to coventry yeah. and i went i'm gonna go up the a1 and it was on a saturday night it is a, it's actually not a bad road there's some nice views mm. and i used to know a really good greasy spoon somewhere like sedgeborough on the way to, it's either Newark or is it Gainsborough? Hmm, that sounds. Yeah, it's, it's up that way. It's Lincolnshire, Nottinghamshire, and there was a really good Sedge Sedge Brook, I think it was called, a little good greasy spoon where you could get a bacon sandwich and a cup of tea. And of course, uh, it will be faster good. going up the A1 anyway, considering that most of the M1 has got 50 mile oh, an hour average yeah, yeah, speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was allegedly hammering it at 70 miles an hour on a Saturday evening in the summer. It was fantastic. 70 miles an hour <laughs> all the way. Okay, thank you very much for those letters. Got more letters now. Hang on, here we go. Yes, fantastic. it's uh, looking at a bulging sack. In this week, Carboy's um, uh, uh, post sack, post bag, mail bag. Uh, if you want to email the show, it's carboy hyphen boys, boys with a Z at outlook.com. The email is car hyphen car. So let's try that again. So I put my false teeth back in. Car hyphen <laughs> boys at outlook.com. It's uh, email the boys at car hyphen boys with a Z at outlook.com. Facebook with car hyphen boys with a Z at car boys four Z. Twitter car hyphen boys at car underscore boys with a Z. First one off. Got an email from Alice in Birmingham. All right, Alice. How are you? Ooh, she wants to know. Tea. Have a cup of tea. Uh, what she should do if her engine management light comes on. It happened recently, but then it turned itself off. Well, first of all, uh, the most important thing is what was the colour of the engine management light? If it was orange, I would say that is an advisory warning on a modern car. Mm. If any lights come on on an older car, like pre-2000, you got you got an issue. Post-2000, mm. mm, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I've got a 2004 Honda Civic that I own. The engine management light comes on in orange, periodically and the reason why is there is an issue with the lambda sensor because yeah. it's a japanese car the japanese have higher um, regulations for fuel emissions than they do in the uk the engine management light comes on when i'm driven the car for a while then it pops off what you can do with that is you go go on amazon get yourself a very cheap diagnostic tool that plugs directly yep. to the scar socket on your car talks to the computer on your car you can have a look and then tells just you what it is. Tells you what it is. Orange, I wouldn't worry. Do you know what I do? Go on. I just ignore it. <laughs> it's, 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 so long as there's no smoke or anything, I just ignore that light. Let, let's get you. If you've got a major problem with your car, you are going to know about it. Yeah. You are going to. You're going to smell something. You're going to hear something. Turn the radio off. Get off the phone. As long as it's hands free. Mm. Um. If it starts driving erratically, if it's lumpy in places, you'll know if something's wrong. Yes, yes. Um, you will know. You will know. Like in the old days when we had cars and you hear, I don't, I don't, I don't. well, something's wrong with this. I remember my yeah. I had Big RS, end's about to go. Yeah, an RS2000, which I ran out of, nearly ran out of oil with. <laughs> Twice. Pistons <laughs> welding themselves. Yeah, to it the just sounded block. like a tractor. <laughs> and, and then I, what did I, I overheated once on the North Circular. And I just pulled over in, uh, I think it was a Tesco a Tesco garage. Had a cup of tea uh, or a coffee. Wandered back to the car. And yes, everything was fine. And off I went again. And didn't. It just overheated. It was an old car. Exactly. Um, if You're right. If, it, if it, the light comes on, worry about it if it's red. I would, on modern cars, and I, but I would get a diagnostic tool. Get friendly with an independent garage. I cannot stress this mm. harsh enough. Independent garages are where it's at because they will give you they will give you a good idea about what's wrong with your car. I got a guy who'll just say, oh, just bring it in in the morning. 
Just bring it in the morning. And then have a look mm. at it and go, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I overfilled <laughs> the, the oil uh, about six months ago. Well, yeah. I think I've overfilled it. He went, bring it in. And he had a look. And went, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just drive right. it. It'll go down. So yes. that's what we'd say. Alice, don't, don't concern yourself. You're in Birmingham. You'll have to take it round the bullring a few times. <laughs> Uh, onwards and downwards, uh, Stefan in Geneva has got in touch with us. Uh, says, Love the show. He wants to know if we do a feature on Japanese, are they K cars? Key cars. Key cars. They look like windy houses, basically. Yes. Uh, the key cars are legally, uh, they're illegal cars uh, class originated in the era from the end of the Second World War, if you didn't know, uh, where most Japanese couldn't afford a full size car. They are. Little windy houses that are about the size of uh, Peter Crouch in height, um, but in length, they're about the size of my shoe. Uh, but if you didn't have enough money, you could buy one of those or a motorcycle uh, to promote growth in the car industry, as well as to offer an alternative delivery method to small businesses and shop owners. The key car category uh, and standards were created originally limited to a displacement of 150 cc uh, but now it's up to 600 cc so that would be with the nipper the nipper wouldn't be part of that yes i was i was going to say something amazing how you knew that off your top of your brain you're like it's as if it's as if you've got wikipedia in your brain simon possibly yes it's amazing um, did you know the slightly racist music i was like um so What's happened with the key cars, which is a, I, I find I find absolutely fascinating, is obviously they were built to kickstart Japan after World War Two. Yes, uh, they're all very very thin, small engines, couldn't 150 cc little cars. Now they've continued with that because uh, places like Tokyo are very very cramped. Mm. You want small little cars. Now as they've moved on to um, make newer models, newer versions, the old factory equipment has been sold to countries like Malaysia. Now, oh. Malaysia has a wealth of oil. So Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, they are, they are oil rich. So yes. in theory, you don't need to drive small cars. But what the Malaysian government's done is taken the Japanese example and get people off motorbikes and get people into cars. So when you go from Thailand to Malaysia, you don't see people on Certainly not with children. I think it's illegal yeah, yeah, yeah. to drive around on a on motorbike with kids. You see the odd guy on an old motorbike. Most of people have bought these tiny little 660cc cars. And the Malaysian brands of Proton and Produa have, yes. yeah, have made little cars. And they are like the, 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 the key cars. They are effectively the same models from the 1980s, from the 1990s. There's the Nipper. There's the Kanchil. There's the uh, ir, 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 there's the Jawa, there's yes. the Irizawa, which I think means butterfly. There's little vans. There's and uh, Malaysians don't really need this, but um, what we've got these cars, we've got this uh, manufacturing, uh, we've bought this much cheap. We know it's gonna, it's from Daihatsu. We know it's from Mitsubishi. It's pretty reliable. We're gonna make our own versions of it. I've driven lots of. I mean, I owned a six, uh, five hundred and fifty-five cc uh, <laughs> Projo Canchil in Kuala Lumpur. It was a great little car. I've driven these countless times. I mean, it's like there's no, there's no safety in it. There's no airbags, yeah. but they're fun, peppy. I've taken one up a volcano with four fat Westerners in it. And it's still, we're going to get there in the end. It's fun little motoring, peppy little turbo engines. They, brilliantly, the Malays, there's a whole culture around these things. They put dump valves on them. <laughs> on a car on a car with, with a one litre engine with, you know, <laughs> 55 brake horsepower. I'll, I'll get another. They, they, they put massive exhausts on them. Mm. They chop out the silencers. Um, so the, the key car is, um, is an interesting. We should do a feature on it. It's interesting. <laughs> How it's been exported in the region? Because they've got like they've, they've even did like little sports cars. So the Daihatsu, I think the Cappuccino no, the, was one of them. It, uh, the, no, there was a Mitsubishi, uh, the Mitsubishi Cappuccino, yes. the Daihatsu Copen, which looks like a yes. Oh, um, if, if you squint, it looks like a mini. Yeah, <laughs> with the little bug it does, eyes. It does. But it's, it's a little... <laughs> now, interestingly, when the new mini came out. Yes. The Malaysians loved it. They said, very expensive. So they took a Kia Nipper <laughs> and they did a whole range of them with like a white roof and a, <laughs> and a, and a primary colour body to make it look like a Mini and they chucked a bit of chrome on it. And you're like, Fantastic. I sort of, if I, if I was myopic or had cataract, that would yeah. look like a Mini. So let me take exactly. my glasses off. 
that looks like a minute. It's not. Um, <laughs> I find that I find the key car fascinating. I think this is something maybe we, we should be applying instead of getting into electric cars. Small, peppy petrol engines yes. for use within the city. And say, no, you can't have this. We will make these things so cheap. Oh, I'm going to buy one of those. They're only four grand. <laughs> cheap, safe, reliable, tiny little cars. You drive around the city and then you, 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 get, you, get, you either hire or you own another car that mm. you're, you're getting from, from. And that's going to be the answer. But electric cars, I'm not so sure. Anyway, uh, that's another point. And we keep banging on about it. Okay. Uh, Al4566 has contacted us uh, on the podcast. Lives in Scotland wants an all-terrain vehicle that can also be used for driving on the highway like a regular car. Now, it must be four-wheel drive. He doesn't need a big off-roader. That's what he doesn't want, a big mm. off-roader. He doesn't want a Q4 or whatever. He lives in the Highlands, apparently literally on the side of a mountain. Uh, <laughs> you know the story, obviously, it's, with it, with, with the haggises always that live in Scotland that have one leg longer than the other so they can run around the mountain. It, um, it was almost like having William Wallace here. It was. <laughs> I did a better accent than Mel Gibson. Yeah. They shall not take our land. They shall not. We'll fight for Scotland, mate. We certainly will. Sounds like groundskeeper Willie uh, now. Riggs, I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too old. I've lived in America all my life. Um, mm. Now, um, what Al says is he has to commute to Glasgow once a week, sometimes twice, from the Highlands. So he wants a car. But it also needs to be four by four. What do you think? Four six? by four. Uh, a car that doesn't need to, doesn't want a big off roader. Okay. I'm thinking possibly Audi of some variety, like Quattro of some variety. Okay. Uh, preferably the estate versions. I think... you can actually you got the versatility there. Now I was thinking it depends what the budget he's got. If he's got silly money, then you want one of those one of those S S six. Oh, uh, the Abate yes. with a like stupid huge engine he's a bit poorer is didn't volvo do like slightly jacked up estates in the early noughties was it the uh x cross oh my yes brother my cousin's husband had one of these they did and it was an estate yes yeah, you're right. he loved it he said it was super reliable four by four i'm i'm from the countryside and my answer yeah. would be there's only one brand and it's super and it would, Ooh, and it would be, it would be, if you want to go sporty, it would be the Impreza. If you want to go legacy, the legacy. Was it the what's Outback? The forest, what's the Forester? The Forester, actually, the Forester is yeah with the turbo. Yeah. So if you want to get something older, maybe fifteen years old, the Forester, yeah, 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 had the turbo. Uh, the the Subaru, they 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 do a good four by four. Um, Love the vol- farmers everywhere. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I know what he's saying. Those huge, giant, huge four by fours. Nobody seems to be making uh, the Jack Tuppers. I think that's a really good looking car, the Volvo. Yes, yes, it was. It, I, no, I know you'd say that. I think Audi did a version as well mm. of one of their estates. Yeah. Um, was it something called something like the Cross Country? Something that's like that. It. I think yeah. so. That's it. The cross country. Yeah. Um, yeah. You didn't see them. You didn't see. They were properly rural vehicle. That's what. That's that's what he needs. But he wants to get on the highway and just pff, be sticking at obviously the safe limit of seventy miles an hour. In no way does he want to be doing ninety all the way to Glasgow. But that, mm. that's out of advice, Al. Um, see what you can find on uh, the internet. Um, you've got one final story for us. Final, final one for us. Uh, it's from Amy. She's uh, emailed the show. From Florida, uh, she's a big fan of VWs, and she oh, says nice. uh, she wants to own a classic VW, but doesn't want to have a bus or a van, and doesn't want a classic Beetle. What is out there? Hmm, classic VW. Uh, we're talking what? Uh, if it's open road, Florida. Yeah, the Carmen Gear. They're really nice. Good choice. Did that come in a soft top as well? They did. Yes. Although, do you really see? This is the thing with with soft top cars. Everybody thinks you're going to have them in countries which are hot. You're not. You're going to have them in countries which are cold. Mm. So Spain, they don't drive soft tops. Yes. They don't drive. They drive hard tops. Uh, my mate in Thailand went and bought a uh, SLK with a folding down roof. 
Yeah, it lasted about three months and then <laughs> I gave it back to the dealership and said, can I have a four door with a hard roof? Because it's Thailand. I know that wants to go around Bangkok with all the pollution, burning sunshine. He said, I had to wear a baseball cap every two minutes. I was going to say, there. invest in baseball caps. Yeah. Uh, what do VW also do? They do uh, golfs. Uh, oh, one golf. Golfs, polos. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Simon. You mean the VW Rabbit? It's American. Yes, American. VW Rabbit. Yes. Sorry. Uh, the Rabbit, the Polo, uh, Corrado V6. Did they get the Corrado or I the Sirocco? Did. Oh, Sirocco. <gasps> if it was me, me, and this is just a personal favourite, I'm thinking yeah. Florida. I'm thinking Florida. So do they surf in Florida? I think is it so. Atlantic, yeah. the Atlantic's there? Surfing? Yes. You're going to need fold-down seats. VW Type 3. Oh. Yes. yes. With surfboards on the roof. You can have a little kip in the cut in the back, or get up to whatever you get up to in the back. Being a surf dude, I mean, maybe Amy lives in Cooking. rural Florida. Cooking, yeah. Microwaving. Yep. <laughs> if, 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 if the Type Threes are rocking, don't come a knocking. That's all I'm saying, guys. Get some little <laughs> curtains for the window. Um, I would say that uh, I, I uh, something like that that would be very very cool. Get your surfboards on, on. but she doesn't say whereabouts in Florida because I know there is a lot of beachfront. Uh, in Florida, there's also a lot of rural areas, but she wants a classic. So if you've got a Type Three, that's those. Now those were the ones that they were the Beetle, but just with like in a shooting brake design. I yeah. Think. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. I like those. Very mm. cool. If yeah, if you are writing to us, tell us a bit about budget so we've got an idea yes. of what we can we can choose as help. well. That would help because we're having to go. Ooh. I mean, she gets you get a, a Type Three with a with a with a nine eleven engine in the back. I think they do those. Mm. Yes. Would you Would you like some uh, music for? Oh, hang on, we better give the email to Car Boys at car hyphen boys at outlook dot com. Car hyphen boys at outlook dot com. We will endeavour to answer your car related questions. Ooh. We will. Hang on, there's some music coming. There's some music Fantastic. coming. Uh... Yes, good evening, friends. Thanks for tuning in. It's your host, Simon, here with another Cowboys Top Quiz. <laughs> to see if our contestant today, Richard from South West London, can win himself an all expenses paid trip to the local petrol station. Oh. Yes, following. Following last week's talk of Trabants and their long production run, this week we're looking at the longest production runs of a single type of car. Ooh, okay. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Green from South West London. Hello. Uh, in true Carboys tradition, the answers are multiple choice. Uh, so okay. you, don't have to feel, you don't have to feel embarrassed if you were 50% right from getting the right answer. I don't have to uh, feel embarrassed if, I, if I'm 50 cent. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, so here's your start of, start for 10, eyes okay. down, look in. So question number one, the Peugeot mm-hmm. 205 uh, was a small French little number introduced okay. in 1983 uh, that supported the models GTI and Roland Garros. Yeah. Yeah. But when did the production end? Was it A, 1995 or B, 1998? I'm going to go for 205. 205. Yes. Two oh five. Remember, these are cars of the same model that All hadn't right. changed. All right. Okay. Same model. Okay. So I'm the two oh five is the model. Yes. Okay. I'm going. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for. I, oh God, it's a great prize. I really want to win it. I'm going to go for ninety eight. Going to go for ninety eight. Bing is the right answer. Yes. Yay. Sixteen years was its production run wow. nice. uh, for the two oh five. Uh, sticking with small uh, European cars, Fiat. Mm-hmm. Introduced its later its first generation of the Panda in 1980. But how long was the production run? Was it A, 23 years? Yeah. Or was it B, 25 years? Now, this is a difficult question because I had a 1983 Fiat Panda. My cousin had a 1992 Fiat Panda. But in 1996, I went to the Geneva Motor Show and they were still making the fiat panda in europe then yes and i think they sold the machine parts to see it who yes. called it the marbella so i think it was still being made years and years it was the crappiest car it rusted <laughs> from the bottom up my one just rusted my yes. cousin bought one 
don't worry, Richard, it was galvanised. Yeah, except it didn't galvanise the inside, so it just rusted from the inside, the inside. out. <laughs> right. You just have galvanised. That was the body of the car. How yes. many, give me, can I have the two questions again? Sorry. So the options are, was it 23 years for A or B, 25 years? I'm going to go 25 years. Uh, oh. It's the wrong answer. 2003 was when the production ended, so it's 23 <laughs> years. I can't, I can't believe they still they still made it to 2003. Absolutely. I remember so, seeing 96 games. Why? The, anyway, sorry, go on. No, 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 they did. They, they carried on. The last model, I think, was the Sisley model, the 4x4 version with the ball bars. Yeah, it was a good model. Did run. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. The Lada 2105 model, the 2105 model, which was known as the Reva here in the UK, yeah. uh, enjoyed a 32-year run from 1980 to 2012. But how many were made? Was it A, 9 million, or was it B, 14 million? Okay, so this car was made. Uh, we're talking about larder. We're talking about this is pretty. I'm going to go for 14. Screw it. I'm going to take. I'm going to, take, I'm going to go big. 14. Bing! Yeah, Here's the right answer. Yes, 14 million was its production run. So uh, quite impressive there for the nice. for the larder. Nice. Uh, we, let's go uh, back to Fiat. Fiat, uh, the Fiat Uno. Do you remember the Uno? Mm. Terrible. The Fiat- car. Yeah. Yes, the Fiat. A lot of these are terrible cars, but yeah. had long production runs. Uh, the Fiat Uno ran from 1980 to 2013. But why did production end in Brazil? Was it because the government required uh, all new cars to have a an airbag or and ABS, or b sunroof and air conditioning? Um, I just think you should have stopped with the question. It ran for 32 years, but why? <laughs> <laughs> but why? Um, I think it was. I think it was a the airbags because I think this yes. is the reason they've, they've stopped making the Beetle and the VW bus now in Brazil. That is absolutely yeah. correct. That is the right answer. And good detail there. Bing. Uh, also from a lot of these crap cars. A lot of these crap cars are Fiat. Uh, the Fiat, uh, the one two six, was produced from nineteen seventy two to two thousand, yeah. which was twenty eight yeah. years. Uh, but how many were produced in Italy, which is obviously its original place where it was uh, where it was made? Was it A one point oh. three million, oh, no. or B three point three million? I'm going to go for the second, three point three million. Uh-uh. Oh. 3.3 million was actually 3.3 million made in Poland. Oh, right. Okay. So they made more in Poland than they did in Italy, where it was originally from. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Fair enough. So let's see if we can get your score back up. Uh, back, to, back to Peugeot, the 404. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the 404 ran for, for 31 years, from 1960 to 1991. But who styled it? Was it A, Ital Design, or B, Pininfarina? I think it was B, Pininfarina. Ping! Yes, no mm-hmm. question about that. Absolutely mm-hmm. right. Pininfarina style that. Um, let's move on. Uh, the original Volkswagen Golf, we talked about it uh, in the letters section. The Golf Mark I was produced from 74 for, no- for 35 years. Where did production end in 2009? Was it A, Mexico, or B, South Africa? I'm going to go for Mexico. Oh, uh, uh, that's the oh, wrong answer. It, it continues, continues its production run until 2009 in South Africa. I so, love a golf. <laughs> nil point there. Did, did, they, did they say, when they tried to cancel it, I'm afraid I've got diplomatic immunity. <laughs> <laughs> and did Danny Glover shoot the head of VW South Africa and go... It's just been revoked. <laughs> uh, Renault, Renault 12 uh, was produced okay. from 1969 to 2006 for 37 years. The question is, who got the license to build them between 1969 and 1979? Was it A, Dacia or Dacia, or mm-hmm. B, Zill? Zill was Polish. Uh, Polish, Zil. Russian, yeah. yeah. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for Zil. Oh, was it, uh, was it Dacia? The, it was Dacia. It was oh. their first car in 1969, the Renault 12 under oh. license. Romanian mobile. Come on, let's let's flourish and end on a high. We've got a couple is, more is questions this, to that's, go. Part, that's Ceausescu, isn't it, Romania? It so is. Yeah, he, he was driving around and murdering people. <laughs> but, right, go on. 
1958 uh, was a good year. The Morris Oxford series pre-production stopped and the rights and to the touring was sold abroad. The car it became was uh, produced for 49 years. What was yes. it? Was it A, the proton? No, 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 I know this. It was the Hindustan ambassador. It was, yes. Ding. Thank you, thank you. A 2007. Car, amazing. The Hindustan ambassador, the, 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 the India's probably number one go-to car. Absolutely. I, to, I, don't, I don't know how many of them were produced, but yes, based on the Moritz Oxford Series 3, and they sold all the tooling. A uh, couple more for you. Uh, the Morgan 4-4 has been produced continuously from 1955 to present, which is 63 years. Brilliant. Um, and it is fitted with a 1,600-litre engine. But where was it from? Was it A, the Ford Fiesta, or B, the Renault Clio? I'm, I want to say the Fiesta didn't have a, a 1.6. 1, a 1. I'm thinking it's the Clio. Oh, uh, uh, is uh, was, the wrong answer. Did the Fiesta have a 1.6? It did. Oh, it did. Okay. So the ZTEC right. version had the 1.6. Oh, wow, okay. So All that's right. the engine that was in it. Uh, oh. Incidentally, the uh, Morgan 4.4 has been produced since 1936. But... Yes. It, they did have a break from the war. I know we weren't going to mention the war, but they're, they did they're, have a they, break. They are probably making bombs or something in the factory. I'm yes. So that's why continuously from 1955. <laughs> okay, Mr. Green from South West London. The Thank last you. question for you. Uh, the Volkswagen Beetle yes. holds the record for continuous production yes. uh, from 1938 to 2003, yes. which is 65 years. Hang, hang on a second. Hang on a second. What about the war for the Beetle? Oh, I guess they, they still produce them. During the war? Yeah, okay. They did, yes. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, 65 years. So in that time, how many did they sell? Was it A, 20 million, or B, 22 million? I'm going to go for 20 million. I'm going to go for 20 million. That answer is incorrect. Oh, uh, it was 22. It was 22 wow. million. So, Mr. Green, no trip to the to oh, petrol station for no, you. No. no flowers for the missus. No sweets for the journey. I'm, None of that at all. That's okay. I'll just go to the charging station and, and not be able to charge up my petrol car. <laughs> uh, incidentally, before we uh, finish the quiz, uh, the Mini Morris uh, was produced from 1959 to 2000, which was 41 years. Citroen 2CV was four, uh, 1948 to 1990, which was 42 years as well. Wow. Uh, and the Lada Neva is still being produced from 1977 to the present day. Brilliant. The, the the Neva is the four by four. Yeah, little tiny. Yeah, four and by the four. Reva is the the Reva was the the saloon was the yes. Fiat one two four. Yes, right, right. Ah, very go. interesting. There you go. So that was this week's quiz. That's Educational. It. Well done. Exciting. Yeah, I'll have to come up with something. Um, uh exciting for next week um yeah that's about it really for this week um i was going to be nasty about somebody but i'm not going to do it <laughs> somebody has taken off the airwaves i've just read what i've written down here um uh, suffice it to say if you do hit the back of somebody's car anywhere in the world or hit a person's car best bet is to pull over and exchange insurance details not yes. just bloody well drive off that would be the kind thing to do. The stop kind thing would details. be would stop, give you details. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It was an accident. Here are my details. You have mine. Don't just drive off. Mm. Um, that's it from us this week at Car Boys. Email the show car-boys at outlook.com. It's car-boys at outlook.com. We will endeavour to answer your questions, car related or not. Facebook, we are car hyphen boys, boys with a Z at car boys, four Zs at the end. Twitter, we're car hyphen boys at car underscore boys, car hyphen boys at car underscore boys. That's it from you. I've been uh, Richard Green and I've been very happy to be joining you this week. And uh, and I'm Simon Sooner and I'm always happy. Always. You're always happy all yeah. the time. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Get lost. Get Thank alive. You. Bye. Bye.